Hi guys, how you doing? Um, just out here today, it's such a beautiful day. Kind of love the summertime and uh, actually kind of out here near a field. And Anthony, what's going on? I'm near this football field out here, it's just so beautiful. Just near my town and it's a high school football field. Back when I used to play high school football, like was like a Matt Saracen guy. Uh, actually, I'm, I wasn't, but uh, it's fun to dream about, and I just love coming out here. It's just a lot easier to do a show when you're, like, outside and stuff, and oh, man. Oscar, let's go Bills, man. I can't wait for the, uh, I can't wait for the season. You guys head down to Jersey for the first couple games with uh, Josh Allen, and uh, you guys head down to Jersey to play the Jets and the, uh, the New York Giants. But uh, I can't. I can't wait for the Bills. I can't wait for the season. Uh, it's unfortunately what happened to uh, Tyler Croft, and I don't really know who who the starting tight end actually is going to be now for the Bills, because I think Clay is gone, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, but anyway, yeah, I wanted to just hop on here, just check in with you guys, and <sighs> oh yeah, the Knox kid out of Ole Miss. That's a good one. I forgot about him in the uh, third round, I think. How you doing, one giant rebuttal? What's going on, my friend? How are you? Uh, I want to lean back here. Let's see if I can fit back here. Ah, this is perfect. Ah, this is perfect. Yeah, so I wanted to talk a little bit about Landon Collins and Dave Gettleman. So Landon Collins yesterday... What Collins was saying was that Dave Gettleman was that Dave Gettleman treated him like crap. And when you're a general manager, it's not the wisest thing to be so nice to players because then you end up burning the players. You know, like the fact is with Landon Collins is that he wanted $14 million. And also he talks about being this great leader but at the same time, him, Odell, Damon, Snacks, Harrison, and Olivier Vernon, they, they kept complaining that the team sucked and that they didn't have enough players. Well, if you're going to complain that the team sucks, that you don't have enough players to compete, if you're going to have that attitude that you suck, that this team blows, that we need more players, that, 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 then, what are, then the people on the team, how are they going to get excited to perform? How are they going to enjoy seeing your face at practice when you basically behind their back are telling that the management that these guys suck, you know? Don't you want to be with a guy that actually believes in improving a team, that actually believes that, that during practice you can actually make these guys better? These guys are all in the NFL. The difference between the best and the worst teams are razor thin in this league. And Landon Collins was just too outspoken. I mean, he was even outspoken about Eli Apple. And he let out all the dirty laundry on Eli Apple, too. So, you know, the fact is with Landon, have fun in Washington. But Dave Gettleman, uh, it's not his job to be your friend. It's his job to evaluate your performance. And it's Pat Shermer's job to be your friend. It's James Betcher. They're your friends. Dave Gettleman's just putting a number on your head. And that's what he's doing. So I do understand that it's nice to have a guy at work that can kind of talk to you. I do understand that it's nice to have guys that, um, you know, that talk to you. Like a GM that's a nice enough guy. But then when they cut you, it's going to hurt even more. It's kind of like that friend, right? That friend that you, that you hang out with. It's that friend you hang out with. And it's like, yeah, you know, it's a good guy. But then you keep hanging out with them and they expect you to hang out every weekend, you know? Whereas an acquaintance that never gets in deep with that friend can easily get away from plants. And it, it's, it's kind of that similar thing. Now, I do understand if Landon's complaining that, like, Alec Ogletree and the guys from Arizona are coming in here like Antoine Buffea and I wasn't given a chance. That's fair. But at the same time, everybody has the freedom to do whatever they need to do. So, it, in a way, I just love it because, you know, Landon Collins, very outspoken guy. You know what I mean? Landon Collins, very outspoken guy. Great guy. Um, but... 
I just want a quiet off season, and that's exactly what the Giants are doing. So I am so poised, and I am so excited for this Giants season. It can't get here soon enough. I'm so excited for the NFL season. We're stuck here with baseball. We're stuck here with really, really shitty uh, playoffs in the NBA. The NBA has just been been, been bad. It, ha it It's not good. I mean, when you look at the NBA, it, it, I mean, other than Golden State and Draymond Green, it hasn't been a great NBA season. And um, and the summer league, I like the summer league even more than the, than the playoffs. Sometimes it's more exciting the NBA summer league, and then um, and then we basically have OTAs and you know guys getting in trouble this time of year, like Ezekiel Elliott again getting in trouble with Zeke. If I were the Dallas Cowboys, I would seriously cut Ezekiel Elliott for getting in trouble again because it's not just one isolated incident. You had the Cleveland incident. You're going out to now a, mu a music festival, kind of acting a fool, you know, when you have the thing in Ohio going on. And um, I wouldn't cut Zeke, no way, but you don't have to sign Zeke when he's going to get older. You could find running backs in the fourth round that are good. Like Alvin Kamara is a fourth rounder. Just find a back. Next year, there's great, great running backs in the class. So you could even trade Zeke for a first round pick. I would do that. Imagine if you traded Zeke Elliott for, uh, you know, one of the top running backs in the NFL next year, like the Clemson kid. Um, the, the, the Clemson, Wisconsin has a great running back named uh, Taylor, Jonathan Taylor. You know, there's there's tons of great backs. And, and why would you pay Zeke all that money? You're paying. Dak, you're paying Amari Cooper. So, um, John, one giant rebuttal asks a good question, and I appreciate all questions during this time. He asks, you know, who's going to be the starting quarterback? It's definitely Eli Manning's team. And Daniel Jones, a lot of the reason why they selected Jones is because Jones is going to be a guy that's going to go in there and learn, and he's not going to make it awkward. He's not going to rock the boat. And Eli Manning and this football team, I think they're going to rally behind Eli. And I look forward to an amazing season. I really do. I think that this season could really be special. If the Giants beat the, the Cowboys to start off the year, which is possible because the Cowboys are going to be rusty as well. If the Giants can go ahead and beat the Dallas Cowboys, this could be a special season. You look at that Carolina Panthers season, they were 6-10. and 10. The Carolina Panthers were 6-10 and 10 before they went 15-1 and, and won a Super Bowl. So it, it, this year, it's all about grinding out wins. It's all about if the Giants can grind out wins, that's why I am so excited about this season. Uh, it's about winning ugly. You know, with Golden Tate, the defense is going to be very, very good. These are going to be low-scoring games. We're going to have a chance to win a lot of these games. It's just about finishing. You look at that Colts game, the Giants could have beat the Colts last year. It's all about finishing. I do too. It's all about the offensive line. It's all about the O-line because you can find great running backs in this league. And I, I don't know if Tony Pollard is good enough by himself, but next year they're going to continue to draft replacement backs. But, you know, I have a lot of Buffalo Bills people on the page. I really appreciate you guys coming out to the page. I'm excited really for this season. I think Josh Allen has a chance to prove that he's better than Baker Mayfield because I think that Baker Mayfield is getting really cocky with Odell Beckham, with the Cleveland Browns. He's getting big-headed. You look at Baker. He has the hot girlfriend. He's on Instagram. He's going to the Kentucky Derby. He's strutting around like he's done something. Where Josh Allen is more humble. Josh Allen is Buffalo. And imagine if the Cleveland Browns selected Josh Allen, I doubt, I doubt that they would have picked up Odell Beckham Jr. I doubt it. So you could look back at the decision and Josh Allen could be better than Baker Mayfield, especially how things are transpiring, Bob, because Baker Mayfield was a cocky guy, but Baker Mayfield would always get the job done. And can Baker Mayfield continue to get the job done while talking a big game or his, or is he bordering too much on arrogance? Is his confidence boiling over to arrogance? And that's a question too that I have with Baker Mayfield, Odell, Beckham, them going at Colin Cowherd on his radio show, are they proving Colin Cowherd right? It's not Colin's job to be your friend. It's not his job to be your friend. You know, Baker Mayfield said Colin Cowherd insulting 
Baker Mayfield and Odell Beckham Jr. that it's not for the kids. You know what I mean? That, that, that they're setting a bad example for kids because they're insulting Odell Beckham Jr. Makes no sense at all. That's just crying about a bunch of nothing. I don't think they'll regret it at all. They sucked before that. The Giants have been terrible for years, for, for three. Ever since Odell was there, they didn't win anything. What are you regretting? What years are you, are you missing? What memories do you even miss? Do you miss that Baltimore game? Do you miss everything else? I mean, you could find a great receiver. There's great receivers that come around, and also the best receivers don't stick. Randy Moss never stuck anywhere, you know? Terrell Owens never stuck anywhere. Um, I know DeAndre Hopkins is sticking somewhere, but, you know, look at Antonio Brown, gone. If Odell can stay on the field, he's a good football player, but, uh, oh, man. How you doing there? How are you doing there, OTB? I appreciate you hanging in there, man. Hey, I appreciate you coming into the show. Oh, my gosh. Well, I guess that that's a point, but also the Giants have Evan Ingram and Golden Tate to throw the ball to. Those guys can win against man coverage. Um, so, you know, we're going to rely on Latimer. We're going to rely on Tate. Um, Sterling Shepard and Tate can win against man. It'll be fine, you know. And also, Eli Manning doesn't have to press the ball to Odell Beckham Jr. I think the Giants are over. I, th I, I love that list. I completely agree with that, that entire list. I am at a high school, yes. I'm in high school. <laughs> no, I'm not in high school. But I, but I agree with you that, like, the uh, Tennessee Titans might be underrated, or you said that they were overrated. I think the underrated teams are the 49ers. I think the um, – yeah, exactly. I, I think one giant rebuttal is right about that. But I, I believe that the Ravens are overrated. I'm trying to – I think the Bills are underrated. I think Denver is really underrated. I think Flacco is going to have a big year. Um, the 49ers, of course, are a team that I've, you know, really – expected to be good for a long time um i think seattle is massively overrated and i think arizona right now is really underrated i think kyler murray can can really put up numbers like a patrick mahomes if you're drafting a fantasy quarterback it should be kyler murray in round four imagine getting isabella and kyler murray in fantasy football that would be a dream when you look at, at what quarterbacks are going to do well in fantasy football, Kyler Murray needs to be near the top of your list. And I could argue that with, um, with Hakeem Butler, with Andy Isabella, with Fitzgerald, um, with, with Christian Kirk, Kyler Murray has better weapons than, than – uh, I mean, I know Kelsey's great than Mahomes. Eli hasn't been that good, but Eli Manning is going to get help. You know, Eli doesn't have to be the special, special quarterback. He's going to be a functioning good quarterback. The Rams are the one team, though. Sean McVay is so good, Bob. Like, I was expecting Sean McVay and the Rams to, like, kind of fall apart, but they never do. Sean McVay is... Um, He's special. He's like, he's one of the great coaches that I've seen coach in the NFL, Sean McVay. He's, he's like a step above Andy Reid. Um, to, to get to a Super Bowl in his second year is absurd. The guy is absurdly good, Sean McVay. To change around that, that uh, Jeff uh, Fisher mess, Sean McVay is an all-time, all-time coach. You know, a guy that you're going to, like, remember. Like a Vince Lombardi, like a... Uh, like a guy like um, who was way back in the day too. Who was way back in the day? Um, Tom Landry, guys like that. You know, even Mike Ditka, but I think he could be even better than Ditka. Hey Joel, how are you? It's good seeing you, man. Good seeing you. Beautiful day here. Beautiful day. I try to get a guest on this podcast, man. I'm gonna try to start up a nice little podcast. Um, I'm excited for college football, excited for the NFL, NBA playoffs, winding down. Looks like Golden State's going to win it again. So just finding out a good spot here just to hang out with you guys. But OTAs are fun, man. Everybody's in a good mood. Everybody's doing well. 
Um, you just hope, you know, to not see any, uh, any injuries. You know, I feel bad for Reuben Foster that he ended up getting hurt. That was a brutal injury. Um, and that was really the news of the OTAs. But I, I just came on here. I think that the Giants are going to have a really good year. I'm loving how everything's going. I love what James Betcher was saying uh, to the team. I loved watching all the interviews. That's a key, is a grounded football team is a damn good football team. So I wanted to chat with you guys, weigh in on the Landon Collins controversy a bit, and uh, just hang out with y'all. So um, I should be back. I should be doing some film review soon. And uh, everybody, thank you so much for uh, paying attention to the stream. And